Hello, Earth Angels. Welcome to your survival guide. Now, I haven't done any research. I haven't looked anything up. I don't know if anything exists, quite frankly. I am just going on my own experiences, and I first realized, you know, what was so different about me in early 2015. It took a long time before I accepted it. I had the angelic energy confirmed by a couple psychics who understand the different kinds of energy. And these are just things that I have learned along the way that I'm sharing. So you don't have to consider me an expert like anything. If something doesn't resonate with you, don't take it on. It's totally up to you. But I'm just going to offer some tips that I think might help life go a little easier. Now, as I was starting to make my list of things I thought I should cover, I did call in Michael to consult him. And I didn't have to pay a dime for my consultant, Archangel Michael. And by the way, if you don't talk to the angels already, you should give it a try. Anyone can. And you may find that they feel quite familiar and comfortable when you start. At least that's the way it was for me. They are not stuffy. They are not formal. In my experience, a lot of people will say they talk like me and thou and, oh, you should be intimidated and scared. But that is not my experience. They're very down to earth. And if they can put up with me, they can put up with anyone. <laughs> so most of the things I'm going to share are things that are not specific to you as earth angels. They are things that I teach people all the time in the group I run on Facebook. They're things like self-love, learning to deal with energy, being sure to clear it, but there are a couple things that are specific to you. And the first one is you may have gone through the same thing I did, which was me. You have to be kidding. I'm the least likely person that could have been an angel. And Michael points out that we are judging our human forms. That has nothing to do with so if that's what you're saying to yourself, why this could really be, it's not valid. You came here to have a human experience. And if you have done things you're not proud of, if you have habits that you think don't match, you're doing your job as a human. And you may be just as different from most people as I am because you wanted to really experience not only how to be a human and to eventually get to the place that you could embrace your fully authentic self, but you wanted to experience people's reactions. And of course, then it makes sense to be someone that is a little outside the norm, or maybe a lot. But don't be judging your worthiness to be an earth angel based on your life here. You came here to help. You are absolutely worthy. Who you are in this life has nothing to do with anything, except you're here to learn. So I hope you're doing that. Now, the other thing that is specific, actually, I guess there's two things. Another thing that is specific to you is your purpose. I know in that first video I made, someone made a comment about, I still don't know what my purpose is. Well, I have good news for you. According to Michael, we are all already fulfilling our purpose, at least our primary purpose. It's our energy. 
there is something different about our energy that we may not be aware of, but it's different. It's a vibration, and I don't like that word because so many people are snobs about, oh, I have the higher vibration than you do. But it's, it is a very high vibration and a whole different feeling kind of energy, and we are getting it out among the masses. So unless you're sitting at home and you are never around any other people, you are already fulfilling your primary purpose as an earth angel. So don't sweat that. Now some of us have more than one. I know I do. But that primary one is what's most important because there's just something about us that makes people feel better. There's something about us that makes people want to talk to us. And that eases their minds to have spilled a little bit. You're already living your purpose. So, whew, take some weight off, right? Now, the other thing that is specific to Earth Angels is this helping stuff. Most everyone that commented said something about, I want to figure out how I can help more people. When you were an angel, all you had to focus on was loving and serving, helping. Michael points out, you're not an angel here. You are a human. And your life is not supposed to be totally focused on helping other people all the time. One of the things as a human that you have to learn is that your energy can be depleted. You can put yourself at risk. And the person that you have to most concentrate on helping is you. So that is a mindset that's really important for you to examine right now. You are defeating your purpose if you are neglecting yourself, if you're putting everyone else ahead of you, if you're not focusing on your own healing, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. This is just as important as anything on the list. More important, really. Yes, we like to help people because it makes us feel good and because there's something in us that knows this is what we have always done. But, Michael says, yeah, but when you were an angel, anything you wanted to accomplish you could without effort you didn't have to expend any energy as you do as a human you were energy and it never was depleted you are a human now and when you help people who don't give any energy in exchange and it's not just any energy. It has to be, you know, somewhat close to an equal exchange. You are leaking your own life force energy. So if all you're thinking about is helping other people and you're not getting much back except maybe a thank you if you're lucky, you are depleting your own energy and you're putting yourself at risk and ah, against the rules. And we all do it until we figure out we're doing it and that we can change that. Sorry, I'm getting something old on. Okay. Healing. We learn when we start to think of ourselves as a healer that we cannot heal others until we heal ourselves. And I don't mean totally because, you know, we're always healing. 
but we have to get a good grasp on our own things that need to be healed before we really can heal others. And here's the big thing. Free will operates. It did when you were an angel. They had to ask. They had to be open to your help. But here, earth angels tend to think that they can heal others by being kind and loving and just by their very supportive presence. Free will is at play. And Michael says, it is not okay to heal someone who has not given their permission. It violates their free will. So there's another mindset you need to look at. Are you button in and trying to heal people that haven't given you any indication that they want that? Are you sending energy that they didn't ask for? It's a violation of their rights, I guess you could say. We cannot heal anyone that hasn't asked to be healed. And also, we can't heal everyone even if someone says they want your assistance. If they're just sucking up everything you send their way and they're not making any effort on their own, they won't heal and it's not your fault. So don't take on any responsibility for someone that you have tried to save or heal that just didn't make it. They had their own responsibility. They thought they could just write on your coattails and not do anything, and that's not how it works. The goal will not be met. So we talked about, you know, this natural inclination to help others, to serve. It's just something in us that wants to do that. It is different here. So instead of thinking that you are helping people by doing for them or putting money into their hands instead of asking earn it themselves, giving them all the answers instead of making them learn on their own. It's not the best way to do things here on earth. We are also supposed to be empowering people by helping them see that yes, by our example, one can be kind and loving, but also one can be independent and strong and empowered. So I guess what I'm saying is you need to ease off perhaps that desire to be helping so much. And here is the primary reason. When we help people without a pretty equal exchange of energy, it depletes our own life force energy. It puts us at risk. And as our energy gets lower and lower and lower and lower because we've been doing for everyone else and not taking care of ourselves and not asking for enough in return, we get sick. We have some serious health issues having my energy depleted by giving too much. So for those of you that mentioned I want to be able to help more people without getting sick, it's not just avoiding getting sick. It is the helping and
and not getting an energy exchange that is allowing you to get sick. You have to ask for more from people. And it's not just so you can quit losing your life force energy. It is to help them grow, to help them become empowered, to help them more clearly see all they can accomplish, which elevates their value in their own eyes. It's not just about helping and doing. It's about stepping back like you would with a child that's learning to ride a bike, letting go and saying, look at you, look at you, you're doing it all by yourself. You know, if you've ever seen a child's face when they first realize you're clear back here and they're riding like crazy, the joy is incredible. Yeah, they might get so excited and distracted, they fall, you know? I think that's a pretty common occurrence when they realize, oh my God, I can't do this on my own. But it's that that we're trying to do for everyone here. If we can quit sacrificing ourselves, basically, that's it. As an angel, you could do all this and it didn't hurt your energy. You weren't sacrificing a thing. As a human, you have to do things differently. You have to take care of your own energy. And you have to remember that doing for others is not healing them. What would heal them is to help them see themselves as more special and strong and capable, which elevates their self-esteem and pretty soon they can accomplish more and more and you have made so much of a difference in their life by allowing them to do their own work. I hope that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah, basically, we just are born people pleasers and we have to back off that. We have to make self-care a priority, and that's been a very hard one for me, but I'm finally getting it. We have to be aware of our energy being depleted and change things so that that doesn't happen. And, you know, I used to leave gaps, I guess, in my protection against taking on energy because I wanted to be able to pick up around me those that might need my help. I was like, you know, the lamb being led to the slaughter, but I was leading myself. These are people that weren't asking for help. And I finally learned to ask, is there anyone that I could do anything for? And leave it up to them. If they wanted to indicate, they could use some assistance. We can't just butt in. We can't just take over and think we're doing the right thing. We're not only violating their right to free will, but we are disempowering them and we're hurting ourselves. Now, I'm not even talking about energy vampires and that wasn't on my list or if it was, I can't see it. <laughs> there are people that are specifically coming for that good angel energy. They may not know what it is exactly, but they know it's good shit. And they are intending to take your energy by asking, asking, asking. And we think of vampires as, you know, with the teeth and the biting the neck and sucking the blood. And so we think of only people that appear to have very obvious bad intentions and as I have found recently, that is not the case. I don't know if this happens to you, but I have a lot of people that tell me, I don't know why, I'm just drawn to you. People that flatter you, that, you know, boost your ego, 
that are always wanting to hang out with you because you are so wonderful also can be depleting your energy. So you may be suspicious of one kind of person and it's actually not the person that is taking away your life force energy. You know, if your antenna go up and you think, really? Aren't you laying it on a bit too thick for not even knowing me? There's a sign that you should be paying some attention to your energy level. If you aren't doing it already, you need to have strong boundaries. You are going to have to tell people, you know, I am flattered and thank you for admiring me, but, you know, I need some space or something about this just isn't really true for me. I guess, you know, that would be insulting, but you could say that if someone would listen to the first things you said. You know, you have to find a way to let people know you only have so much of you to go around. We have to set boundaries. And again, it's not just to protect ourselves from the assholes. It can be the sweetest people on earth, but they are still soaking up our energy by asking for our time and attention. Okay. organizers 
and we are reluctant because we didn't have to take any position of leadership where we were. You know, I'm not going to say we were just minions. I think that's the word. It's just, you know, we did what we were supposed to do. And there were no classifications or rankings. We just did what we were supposed to do. We didn't have to tell people what to do. We just did what they needed. So then we come here and I think many of us had experiences as children where we experienced the backlash of people that abused their power, that hurt us by using their power. So those two things make us reluctant, but we have to empower ourselves also. So don't be so afraid of it. If you're asked to be a leader of a group or be an organizer in a charity event or something, and it feels uncomfortable, yes, it's uncomfortable because it's something that you may find threatening because people have abused their own power against you in the past, but you're not going to abuse it. You just won't. So, empower yourself also. This is going to be so damn long, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yes. Well, a lot of us are so hard on ourselves. to fail, but think about it. We never failed where we came from. We accomplished anything we wanted to. Anything that was asked of us. And we never failed. And then we came down here to be humans and, oh yeah, being a human, you fail. So try not to be so hard on yourselves when you don't accomplish something. Remember, you're a human Failure is part of being a human, and also part of that is accepting that it's okay to not be perfect at everything. It's okay to not get things right every single time. Try to be gentle with yourselves and just accept that failure is part of your path. It's expected of you as a human. Okay, so I think I have covered everything on my list except how to manage your own energy. So I think a large number of us are empaths and many of us are very strong empaths. There is a test you can take online. It doesn't take long at all. It's www.empathtest.com and it'll show you where you fall on the scale. And it'll also tell you in what areas there are shortcomings or in what areas you could improve we feel people we feel what they're feeling so we know when they're lying and when they say they're just fine some of us can feel their pain the medical intuitives can feel what's going on in people it's a tough one because we feel like just being kind to listen but the problem is we take on their energy I'm talking just an empathic person now possibly we take it on in doses larger than regular empaths but I'm not going to make a differentiation People that feel the energy, that take on the energy of others, need to find a way to not take on so much of that. And on my website, lifestartswithlove.com, I have a blog and, you know, I have suggested 
ways that you can protect yourself against the energy, but I'm going to be honest, I can't keep all of it out, even when I'm not volunteering to take it on so that I can help people. We just are not always going to keep all that energy out. So I'm just going to share with you what I think is the most important change in the way you think. If you have been in a decent mood and you get around someone and suddenly you notice you're sad or angry, cranky, frustrated, whatever, and you can't pinpoint in your own life why that might be, recognize you are taking on their energy, their emotions. The most important thing you can do at that point is to tell yourself, oh, whoa, there, hold up. That is not my energy, and I'm not taking it on. Now, some of you are going to be saying, oh, if I could help by taking on their energy, I will. Here's the thing. You don't help them by taking on their energy. You do not take anything away from them. You take it on yourself. They still have what they started with, and it starts to hurt you, and you are even less capable than of helping them. So there is your first thing to always do is say, hold it, it's not mine, I can't help them by taking it on, I am not going to take it on. But the other thing is, like I said, we always take it on, even when we're aware of this stuff. It's really important to clear your energy. And here I am going to tell you to go to the blog and look for the down and dirty energy clearing blog post because it's complicated and I don't want to really go on so long that you're sleeping. We have to take responsibility for what energy we are soaking in from other people. We are literally like sponges. What I really needed to emphasize to you is it's not helping them. It is not decreasing their suffering. Yeah, if they talk to you and they're unloading a bit, they might feel a little better, but they still have that energy, and now you do too. And the more and more you take, the less efficient you will be at being there for other people. So, if you've flown on a plane, and you've probably heard this before, the flight attendant does their spiel, and they always say, parents, you need to grab the oxygen mask and the parents are all outraged. How can you say that? Of course, I'm going to give the oxygen mask to my child. And the way it is explained is your child won't be able to help you. If you take the oxygen mask, you can help your child and yourself. If you give it to the child, sacrifice your own well-being, your child's going to be screwed when you pass out, it is important that we remember to grab the oxygen mask first for ourselves. And then, in a healthy way, we can help other people. But if we don't, if we're always handing that mask to them, we're going to lose so much energy that we're no good to anyone, including ourselves. So managing your energy is extremely important. And now this isn't on my list, but here it is coming in. So let me tell you. Something cannot be an important mission for us if it doesn't bring us happiness and joy. So if you are going to be looking for that other thing you believe you're supposed to be doing other than just spreading your lovely angel energy. It's not going to school and, you know, dealing with the drudgery of this and that unless it just really lights your fire. If you're doing all the schoolwork and you're putting the years in to do something that brings you joy every day, that's something different. But it is not a nine-to-five job that you can't stand. If you 
have another mission or another purpose that you're supposed to be doing in this life. Think about the things you love to do or that you think you would love to do if you're wanting to experiment a little bit. But don't get on that sacrifice idea and go with that because I can guarantee that is not what you're meant to be doing. We are all supposed to be finding a way to live our bliss. And that includes our mission. If something feels like sacrifice, if it doesn't give you pleasure, if you're just doing it because you think you're supposed to, it ain't right. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to encourage you now to haul out your little angel and start doing more things that make you happy. When you cater to that part of yourself, you know, where you're walking around the house humming and you realize I feel good, then you're on the right track. There probably are other things, guys, but you know, I'm over a half hour now and I do go on. I think I have covered everything on my list. Oh, I just noticed the humility. You know, we're humble. Most of us are too humble though. It is okay to be proud of your accomplishments. You don't have to poo-poo what you've done. It's okay to say, hey, you know, I guess I'm kind of cool. Or hey, I'm proud of myself that I did this. You don't have to hide your light. You should never hide your light. If you're proud of yourself, that will reflect out. If you're happy, that will reflect out. If you are taking care of yourself and Love yourselves. I look forward to reading you.